So here's a question. Is the Peace USA burning down? I sense that sometimes there's more steam than smoke. Have you seen this video of the prop malfunction at the NBA game that caused a frenzy in the crowd? Listen to what the announcers say. Well, George, Fun got... night at the palace, but we got a little smoke yeah, coming off. from one of those machines. Some of the photographers might get overcome here momentarily. It's more steamy <laughs> than smoky. We hear about a lot of smoke. I sense that sometimes it's exaggerated. I want to share with you an example of some inflammatory language. This is the front page of the layman. It was an issue that I watched George Munsing, my pastor, walk into the room with in this room some years ago when Dennis Tarr had organized a denominational issues meeting after a general assembly. George had this tucked under his arm and I read it shunned. I read the article and I was dismayed to see the content of it. It reports about how supposedly a prominent African church leader was offended by the PCUSA. This is from the first paragraph of the lead, the, the headline article of the paper. Assigned to a distant hotel, he, that's the moderator of the Presbyterian Church of East Africa, he commuted to and from the convention center by a shuttle bus. He was given less than $200 to cover 10 days worth of meals in an area where hotel food is pricey, if not exorbitant. And although other ecumenical delegates were welcome to the podium to bring greetings from their people, Githi, he asked, and he was told there would be no time for him. So what's the real story? Assigned to a distant hotel, they said. It was six blocks away. It was a half mile. It was one of the closest hotels to the General Assembly Convention Center. Um, he was given less than $200 to cover 10 days worth of meals. It sounds like we mistreated this person terribly. I was a part of, of the arrangements for him. All of his meals were taken care of. A full itinerary. There were banquets included in it. He didn't need the money, but this was $200 courtesy money, and for emergencies for an international visitor who was here. But they make it sound like we just mistreated him. He was told there would be no time for him. Well, all of the ecumenical visitors were already scheduled weeks and months ahead to speak. He was a last-minute invitee substitute for the real invitee who didn't come. And the layman presented this as a horrible treatment of an African brother. More smoke, more steam than smoke, I think. I, I want to say something about the layman. Um, on February 28th, I was standing right there. And I appealed for honest inquiry in our discernment processes. I appealed for honest investigation and not propagandizing. I tried to be fair. I try to be gracious about the layman, crediting the new editor, Carmen, for her efforts at fairness. But I did urge us to acknowledge their long history of propaganda and distortion, such as the example I just showed you. It was 10 years ago, but it's been a long history of this kind of propaganda. I was not urging blanket acceptance of the layman. In fact, the How We Got Here article, which some of you have received, contains what I think is sarcasm and bias, of which I do not approve. And yet it has been suggested that I approved of this flyer because I now endorse the layman. I do not endorse the layman. I simply said that they are doing better, and I applaud the efforts when they get it right. But I urge you to do better than the layman. There's a story that's circulating around the Presbytery, a story that in 2001, the General Assembly of the PCUSA was asked to approve an overture to reaffirm the singular saving lordship of Jesus Christ, and the overture was defeated. Not really true. It was not an overture. It was a commissioner's resolution, which was an ad hoc presentation by two commissioners at the assembly. There were three overtures that came from presbyteries they were seriously dealt with, and in response, the assembly affirmed that Jesus is the only savior of the world, initiated a report process that brought back then in 2002 
a motion to approve a report that included the declaration that Jesus Christ is the only Savior and Lord, the overture was overwhelmingly approved by the General Assembly. And in an unusual act, the next assembly reapproved it, which they don't usually do. Is there more steam than smoke? Are things being exaggerated? I simply ask you to study carefully and not take to study carefully. As I was taught by my youth pastor, Bob Oman, here at Trinity, in the fireside room, I encourage you to do your own careful research and think for yourself. Be alert to the difference between propaganda and discernment. There is confusion on controversial issues. One of them is on gay people in the church. Some questions. Can a gay person become a member? Yes, absolutely. We welcome all people who profess a faith in Jesus and a desire to follow him. We welcome them on their journey of discipleship and towards wholeness. Can a gay person be ordained? Here the answer switched in, in the last couple of years from no to maybe. And the maybe is nuanced. A particular presbytery may ordain a minister or a local church may ordain an elder or deacon if they determine that such orientation or behavior is not grounds for denying ordination or installation. You may question how that could happen, but it does happen in some places. It would not happen here. Can a presbytery be forced to ordain or install a gay person? No. Can a local church be forced to install or ordain a gay person? No. Can a PCOA say pastor marry a gay couple? No. Friends, if the PCUSA was burning down, I would leave. After helping everyone exit safely, I would go. But it's not. And that is why I'm staying. 